hey what's up so there is this concept called normalizing state shape in redux so when you start developing many and many applications in redux you will keep facing the same issues and one of them is this nested structure in your redux state so for example here we have an array of posts and usually your api will retain this kind of json and you will parse it and put it in the redux state as it is so and the issue here is for each post we have the author object as you can see with a username and a name and each post containing comments and each comment containing an author as you can see so this is the first post and this is the second post with the same structure so if I search for the user tool I can see it's have been duplicated here and here so if I want to update I mean this might not make sense in this context but for example if I want to update this object and each component that selecting data from this place needs also to get that update so it will get in the reducer it will get very complex I mean you need to find each place this object have been referenced and you need to update it. and uh, if you think about it it will be very annoying so I need to keep it track where this user object have been uh, added in my redux state and I get updated everywhere so it's, it's really annoying and for example also in this case so user 3 is have been mentioned three times so for example if I change it here to user maybe 6 I need also to change it here and here so the components that are getting the data from this object or this object uh, gets the correct information so the first issue that is there is so much duplication here so I'm in a real world example this might be even more and the second thing is as you see here so nested data means that the corresponding reducer has to be more nested and therefore more complex uh, in particular trying to update deeply nested feed can become very ugly very fast and I agree with these two points uh, 100% uh, I also agree with this one so since Im immutable data updates require all ancestors in the state tree to be copied and updated as well uh, a new object references will cause connected UI components to re-render and update to a deeply nested object deeply nested data object could force totally unrelated UI components to re-render even if the data they are displaying hasn't changed hasn't, hasn't actually changed um, yeah if you think about if I am changing one single thing in this post for example I'm changing a single thing in the body every component that's playing the comments that's playing the author will be re-rendered again because the props for it have been changed and um, this is annoying and it might might cause some performance issues this is why some websites or sometimes I build some websites and when I click on a button that opens something and display some data there is some performance issues like there is a small lag between if each action or each click I do uh, mo most of the time this has this kind of stuff or organizing your redux state like this has to do uh, something with it so to solve this they will map the state so for example let's say this is the response from your API you will map it to a different format we will call it a normalized state and for, you can think about it for each entity or for each table in your database you will have an object in your redux state you can think about it like that so we have here posts this is the normalized state so inside we have posts we have comments and of course we will have users and the shape for each one of them is the same so we have by id key and all ids by id key will be like a map so the key will be the id the value will be the post so as you can see this is the id of the post it's one this is the object for the post this is two this is the object and you will notice something the author here is referenced by id it's not the same object or not the whole object sorry so now if i want to get this author i will go to the redux i will go to the users key so where is the user of id one this is it this is the information for it so if i updated this here each place or yeah if I did if I updated this here each place subscribing to this object or to, to this part of the state will get the same uh, updated data so you can think about it like a single uh, source of truth and we have also all IDs this is I believe if you want to loop over the posts and display them you will loop, loop over the IDs and for each ID you will go to the posts and get it and display uh, maybe a mapped component for this object 
So yeah, and the same idea for the comments. Each comment is referenced by the ID in each place, and to get it, there is only one place, which is this place here. The comments, then go Y ID, the ID of the comment. Uh, yeah, and even it, it same applies on, on the author. As you can see, these this post and this comment is referencing the same author. So if I change it here, everywhere uh, I am displaying this data, it will be changed. So very awesome. And of course, the response from the API will be come will be or will come like this. So it's not normalized. We need to normalize it. So when you dispatch your first thunk and the data returned, you need to map this data to this shape, the normalized uh, shape. This is what you need to do. This is the first thing. Uh, then you can um, do whatever you want. I mean, you should definitely read this uh, article. It's really good. And here they are going how you can model your relationships and tables. This is many to many, as you can see. It's the same idea. By ID, all IDs, and uh, yeah. And they are introducing you to the normalizer library, which you don't need to use because we will be using the create entity adapter from the Redux toolkit. And yeah, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but if you want to understand this create entity adapter function, you need to understand uh, normalizing the state shape or how you can normalize it. But before we can start, uh, we need some data to work with. Uh, the JSON API does not provide nested data, for, uh, unfortunately. But uh, I have this simple tool, it's called Pulux. Uh, it does that. So what I can do, or maybe you can do it with me as well. You can come here, create maybe users, and open this. You will drop uh, a new ID, an email, full name, maybe. Yeah, I think that's enough. Then you create another one called... Uh, articles and we will do almost the same thing so UID and paragraphs maybe an image and another one so this will be comments it won't be perfect but uh, it will work enough for us or it will work good enough for us so we can get this response which I am about to show you and just uh, normalize it and to be just like this and yeah and now I will click this button to link the articles and the comments with the users now if I click generate you will see this we will see we have uh, an array of users they are 10 and for each one of them we have an array of articles with ID paragraphs and image and an array of comments and, but I need to convert this to an API, so I will come and click on this star. This will download uh, a zip file, which I need to extract. So and go to your downloads, unzip your uh, the file has been downloaded. Uh, I think it's called it's this one. I will put it in my desktop. Desktop. I will call it Pollux API. So I will go there. So if you type ls, you will see there is a readb. This is an instruction how you can run the API, but you can just type npm install. And while that running, you can actually click on this. You'll see a tutorial uh, if you are interested in this kind of stuff. I, I created this just as a a fast way so I can prototype my front end. Okay, this should not take that long, but uh, yeah. So since this is finished, I can run npm run dev, and I will have a server on this, like this. So let me go to it. So it's the same data that I showed you, but as I asked for API, we have post, patch, update, delete, we have pagination, we have a query params, you can filter data. It's just JSON server with the data that Pollux uh, generated. So, and as you can see, we have an array of users, we have articles and comments. So, what in the next video, I will start using the create entity adapter function from Redux toolkit to normalize the state using this function. Yeah, the same function. With these callback functions and 
we will hook up each reducer it gets it gets generated and uh, so on and I will be using thanks and I'll show you uh, hopefully everything useful so yeah I hope this was useful anyway and bye